Next up is the incredible journey one man makes to become the first disabled person to complete the World Marathon Challenge. You've crossed 18 time zones. You've got to do it all in 168 hours. You're eating, sleeping, recovering as best you can on a plane. We flew into Antarctica on a Russian cargo plane. The plane door opens and instantly you could feel the wind and you could feel the biting kind of temperature kicking in. At that point, I was a little bit overwhelmed. So I was wondering, how is this going to work? Is this going to work? Yeah, they've adjusted the course because of the weather. So we're doing more, more up and downs than we are loops now. I'm paralysed from the chest down. I can't feel or move below my chest. Now the big challenge with that is that in temperatures of minus 20 and below, you're potentially going to get frostbite. So I needed to get moving, get my heated socks on, put that battery pack on and get going. We set off on that start line. With the wind, you felt strong, I felt confident and this was the first kind of like lap and I was like, I feel good, I feel like I've got this. And all of a sudden you're coming back into that wind and you could feel any exposed skin was starting to kind of like toughen to the temperature. When people were walking past me, it was <laughs> demoralising because I was giving it every ounce of physical energy and physical force and strength that I think I had, but that was always going to be the case. I knew that for me this challenge was going to be a lot different to anybody else. So we've got Darren Edwards coming into the finish now after his first marathon. We finished that marathon, I finished in five hours 50 and I was exhausted. Congratulations Darren. And it was only once we were on the plane and the plane was in the air and we were moving back to Cape Town that it was the realisation that this wasn't a one-off. We knew that in probably about 12 hours time we would find ourselves back out on the Cape Town promenade lined up ready to do marathon number two on day two. Making it to day two has been an effort. Amazing. Two in the morning, you went to bed last night, and one in the yeah, morning, I fell out of my wheelchair like on the street. <laughs> at 12 a.m., an hour before that, we were having an absolute nightmare with the bike, which Carl sorted last minute this morning because the bike shop opened, we can get it. And uh, it's got a nosebleed, so always good. We made it to the start line. <laughs> Nearly made it to the start line. Made it to the start line, there we go. Cape Town itself is a stunning city. You know, I'd never been before, I'd never been to South Africa at all. And all of a sudden you're running along the promenade with Table Mountain off to your one hand side. You've got this gorgeous, you know, ocean off to your left. You're going from what was minus 20, 25 the day before to temperatures that were going up towards 30. That temperature difference was really difficult. Oh, how are you done? Yeah. I'm so exhausted. Well, yeah, you had a hard day yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. The plane that we used was a private charter plane. I'd never been on a chartered plane in my life. And in my head, I was thinking of something a bit g 5 a bit kind of, you know, uh, billionaire -y. It wasn't, it was pretty much just an old easy jet plane that had been transformed into uh, a charter plane. So sleeping was difficult, near impossible, I would say at times. The only thing that was on your side was the fact that you were exhausted. It's pretty much a case of as soon as you land, you're getting the baggage off. From landing to starting the marathon, we had two hours. From finishing the marathon to getting back on the plane, we probably had three hours. So we are just starting our descent into Dubai for marathon number four. We were in Perth for less than 14 hours. And we'll be in Dubai for less than Madrid was day five. You know, you know that you've got this one, then you've got two left. And psychologically, that was quite good because you were over the hump. But because we'd been held up logistically in South Africa, we found ourselves biding our time. And all of a sudden, we're now doing five marathons in four days. So we're all kind of begrudgingly getting off the bus and thinking, here we go, number five, let's just do it. What I don't know is that behind me, uh, TJ, my partner, and her dad, my future father-in-law, have turned up in Madrid completely covertly. I had no idea. What? No! <laughs> what? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> that was a really lovely surprise and psychologically a really great boost. How are you feeling? Yeah, hard work today. Yeah. Technical course? It's a tough course because of the potholes. Yeah. And the inclines. And the speed bumps. Yeah. The speed bumps just knock the speed out. Yeah. Great effort, keep it up. So by day six, you know, you've been living with these people pretty much 24-7 for six days. So everybody was kind of, you know, each other's cheerleader. Even in Fortaleza when the heat and humidity was hot and your mouth was dry and you really didn't feel like talking, people would always find that second and say, come on, you look, you're looking good, you're looking strong. You don't know the impact that those words have on someone who might be on the verge of thinking, can I do this? Am I going to give up? Packing for the final time. Well, Carl's packing for the final time. I'm just doing this. But yeah, our last flight before... No, this is the flight to Miami. Seven marathons will be done in seven days, just about. This was it. I had this amount of energy left in the reserve tanks to give and I wanted to finish Marathon 7 with nothing left to give. I wanted to give it everything I had and to know that I'd left it all out on the field. The track was lined with people cheering and whooping. The banner is out across the track which says World Marathon Challenge finish, you know, 2023. And it was huge. It was, I don't know, a mixture of relief, joy. I think for me it was, I was so scared of failing this challenge because it was such a huge challenge and something that I'd never done before. I'd never done a single marathon, let alone seven. So if there was a, another version of me in hospital right now who's just had whatever it is that's changed their lives, hopefully I can show them that injury and disability doesn't stop ambition, it doesn't stop having aspiration, it doesn't stop you from dreaming big when you have a spinal cord injury, life doesn't stop when something doesn't go to plan that changes your life. Congratulations to Darren Edwards there.